in this nice snappy brown leather case from 1959 is a little small three inch tape recorder from Phonotrix. Case is in good condition. Got pretty nice hardware holding it all together. This is from uh, West Germany, I think 1959. Before we take it out, I want to know, you to notice that really you don't have to take the tape recorder out. You can use it with the top open and opening the flap here on the case if you choose to not remove it. That way your controls are accessible and the recorder is accessible and the top will flip down. All right, here's the recorder. It says Phonotrix, but it's upside down. Made in West Germany. It's kind of blue and gray. Have a handle. Here's our controls here. Our, when it's on blue, it's on playback. Red, it's on record. Anything red is for recording. It plugs in here. Anything to listen like headphones or something is blue, you plug in there. On the back, this is a jack for a car adapter. Nothing around the right side. This plays at a three and three quarters inches per second. Let's set that aside for a minute. And here's our uh, microphone and this I believe is a adapter it's got red so that'd be to record it's got wires here so I suspect you would hook that up to a radio or a phonograph or something to get output from that to this it's got a little dial here with some indents but they're not marked they're just sort of spots. <laughs> so I don't know, I haven't tried that and we won't be using that in this video. But it's interesting. We have a extension cord, sort of generic for recording to probably get to your old stereo system or something. We won't be using that. And inside the flap up here some other things. Here's the instruction manual. Got a couple of more tape reels here. I've probably had this unit for if not 10 years, pushing 10 years. And I sort of stuffed it away and forgot all about it. We have a phone adapter, some extra tapes, and a stethoscope headphone set. Phonotrix. It's interesting it connects with this. And this is um made in Denmark so if I wanted to use the little stethoscope I didn't hook that to that and this would go into the blue side of the control and I have headphones so we won't be using any of these things we won't be recording through the case like it's possible. We won't be using this, so we'll set all this aside. It's interesting that the top cover, lid I guess you call it, is also got a pretty strong blue hue to it. 
nice touch I think all right looking a little closer we'll take the top off my top isn't exactly right this little uh, latching lever which should stick into the spot right here doesn't fit right the the little catch post I have to force it into the hole there and then I can't open it with the press button it doesn't work so the top on this one just kind of sits there fairly loosely and here's our play which you would use in conjunction with the record switch and here's our rewind and you would have your control switch set on blue at the time here's our speaker left mutes the speaker so you don't get feedback when you're recording and here's our volume dial which is for both recording and playback and here are our reels you notice they're threaded kind of oddly if you're used to things there the tape actually comes around the right side there through the tape guides then out through this way but the end results the same as you'll see the oxide side ends up being in contact with the tape head let me put those aside for a minute Take off the front tape guide head and if you want to take off the back tape guide head you can put these two little things out get this one out now we can take the back of the tape guide off you should be able to take the back of the tape guide off. Oh, that one's not all the way out. There we go. Now we can see better. So you have your pinch roller and your capstan, your tape head, and your little brush, and your magnetic erase. So we can zoom in here a little get all that okay um, the plate is metal of some sort but everything else seems to be plastic uh, maybe rubber or vinyl it's in pretty good shape I don't see any rust on it or really offensive scratching or paint chipping here's the instruction manual for some reason when I got this there were two instruction manuals in it complete you can pause your screen and read these that shows the odd way you have to thread it comes out being normal in the end like I said you can pause your screen circuit diagram some of our specifications it's only 200 to 6,000 
cycles, that's not very good. Four transistors. Here's your legend for some of the parts, although some of these are numbered inside and not back here. And there's some things on the back here. I saw something interesting on here I'm looking for, and I can't remember where I saw it. Ah, here it is. Farther on the back. If this is a date code of 1959, and I think it is, it's reasonable compared to what other dates I've seen for this on the internet, you'll notice the agent, these people, agents for the United States, Cuba, and South America. Something tells me if this is 1959, that those people were not agents for Cuba very much longer. Back in the day when Fidel took over, 59 I think maybe. Alright, to put your batteries in and check out inside, you press the little button there. And here we are, looking in. Four D cells. Our motor, a couple capacitors. I've sprayed a lot of contact cleaner in here. Um, down in there into the hole there in the pot. You might be able to see some things of interest in there. Our motor. It's very clean in here. Not a lot to it. I mean, this is a... It seems to be a pretty simple machine. And inside the base, there's a note to only use leak-proof batteries. Not to keep them in, in, in the instructions, it notes to not keep batteries that are not leak-proof in the machine when you're not using it. All right, we have our reels installed again. I don't know if you can see down inside that speaker part where it says once again made in Western Germany. And you could buy it in Cuba, I guess. Alright, I have the microphone plugged in, although I don't know if it's in the right spot. I might have to try this several times until I find out if there's a recording on it, because you can't play back the recording with the microphone on. So I'll do it, and if I have a re then I have to take the microphone out, so I might ruin my setting for the next try. Um, we have to have this on red. Let's see, red so we can record. And we'll put our volume at 9 and put the speaker off and see if we get anything. All right, I'm testing the Phonotrix 3-inch reel cap stand tape recorder from about 1959. It has its quirks, mostly with the microphone jack. You never can be sure if the microphone's plugged in right or not. And to play it back and test, I have to disconnect the microphone, which ruins the setting if it was good. So I think, well, I'll try it again, put the microphone back in, and, oops, this time I put it in wrong. So it's always potluck. But this is a very pretty machine. Blue, gray, nice handle. Uh, motor noise, of course, as you can hear. 
I'm kind of amazed it still works after all these years. I guess it didn't when I got it. I sort of remember that. It's been so long, though, that I was disappointed with it and stuck it in a hole and just forgot about it. Um, happened to run across it the other day. Decided to try it again. I don't know if it's any better or not. I, I don't know what it would be. I didn't do anything to it in the intervening years. But I don't remember it even working. I don't remember the reels turning. And let's uh, stop this and play it back. Remove the microphone. Get that to the blue side. Rewind. Supposedly these tapes are like 22 minutes. something. That's a start. still work. I don't quite have the volume setting right for the recording and playback. Some of that I think is with this volume switch but I, which I sprayed cleanser on as much as I could. I'm not sure I sprayed enough. But I did quite a bit. So that's all I'm gonna try with this. It's so temperamental. I'd probably just get frustrated doing a lot more. But in a way, it's a very nice recorder. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I dug it out of its hole in storage to mess with it. And I'll probably take the batteries out and uh, put it all back in the case and uh, save it for something in the future. That's the Phonotrix recorder from about 1959 made in West Germany. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't, please subscribe.